SOAP protocol. This is lecture 4 of section 1. Let's begin. Now in this lecture we will study about the various web services protocols and then we will study the SOAP protocol in detail followed by the various SOAP elements and then we'll have a test. Now web services protocol. Web services consist of a set of internet protocols and standards for exchanging data between applications. The web services protocol stack describes the layering of the set of internet protocols or rules which are used to design, discover and implement web services. This is the web service protocol stack and these are the various layers and components of the stack. Now we will study each layer in detail. Layer 1, which is a transport layer, is the first component in the stack and is responsible for moving XML messages between applications. The transport protocol most commonly used is the standard HTTP protocol. Other commonly used web protocols are SMTP and FTP. Layer 2. This is the XML messaging layer. The XML messaging specification is a broadly defined umbrella under which a number of more specific protocols are defined. SOAP is one of the more popular and most significant standards in communicating web services over the internet. The XML document both requests and responds to information between both the systems. And now we'll come to layer 3. This layer contains information on available functions, on the data types for the XML messaging, of course. It contains the binding information about the transport protocol and the location of the specific web services. In other words, it contains the visitors. Any client and application that wants to know about a service uh, and what data it expects to receive, whether or not it delivers any results, and the supported transport uses this WSDL to find that information. WSDL provides a common format for describing and publishing that web service information. Typically, WSDL is used with SOAP, and the WSDL specification includes a SOAP binding. Layer 4 UDDI. Now, this layer represents a way to publish and find information over the web. You can think of this layer as the white and yellow pages of your phone book. The white pages of a web services provide general information and the yellow pages include the classification of data for the services offered. Now, the protocol that you use to publish your web services is known as UDDI. The UDDI business registry allows anyone to search their existing UDDI data and enables you to register your company and its services. With RAT Studio, your data automatically gets published to the registry or distributed directory for business and web services. Now we will study the SOAP protocol in detail. SOAP, originally an acronym for Simple Object Access Protocol, is a communication protocol between applications via the Internet. It is a format for sending messages based on XML. SOAP provides a way to communicate between applications running on different operating systems with different technologies and programming language, and that makes it platform and language independent. It is simple and extensible, and it allows you to get it on firewalls. Now let's look at an example of what SOAP procedures can actually do. An application can send a SOAP message a server, a server that has web services enabled, and that SOAP message could be a real estate price database, for example. The server then returns an XML format or document with the resulting data that could be the prices, the location, or the features. Since the generated data comes in a standardized machine parsable format, the requesting application can then integrate it directly, and that is how SOAP makes this messaging. Uh, platform and language independent. SOAP building blocks. 
A SOAP message, as shown in the diagram, is an ordinary XML document containing some particular elements. And those elements are envelope, header, body, and port. We will discuss all these elements in detail. The SOAP envelope. The SOAP envelope element is the root element of the SOAP message. This element defines the XML document as a SOAP message. This is an example of how the SOAP envelope element is defined. If we notice the SOAP namespace and the value that is assigned to it, the SOAP namespace should always have the value that is assigned. If a different namespace is used, the application generates an error and discards the message. So this namespace defines the envelope as a SOAP envelope. Next, we come to the encoding style attributes. This is used to define the data types which are used in the document. This attribute may appear on, the, on any of the SOAP elements and applies to the elements contents and all of the child elements also. By default, a SOAP message has no default encoding. Now we come to the SOAP header element. The SOAP header element contains the header information it is an optional element and it contains application specific information like the authentication and payment about the SOAP message. If the header element is present, it must be the first child element of the envelope element. All immediate child elements of the header element must be namespace qualified. Let's have a look at the SOAP header code defined in the XML. The example contains a header with a trans element and a must understand attribute with a value of 1 and a value of 234. We will discuss the must understand attribute in the next slides. The attributes defined in the SOAP header actually defines how a recipient should process the SOAP message. The must understand attribute. SOAP defines three attributes in its default namespace, which are must understand, actor, and the encoding style. We will discuss all three. The SOAP's must understand attribute can be used to indicate whether a header entry is mandatory or optional for the recipient to process. This is the syntax of the must understand attribute. If you add a one to a child element, of the header element, it indicates that the receiver processing the header must recognize that element. If the receiver does not recognize the element, it will fail when processing the header. Now we come to the actor attribute. The SOAP actor attribute is used to address the header element to a specific endpoint, and the syntax for that is SOAP colon actor and the URI of the specific endpoint. Now, a SOAP message may travel from the sender to a receiver by passing through various endpoints along the message path. However, not all paths of a SOAP message may be intended for the ultimate endpoint. Instead, it may be intended for one or more of the endpoints on the message path. So, the actor attribute specifies the address of the header, header element to a specific endpoint for the endpoint it is intended for. The encoding style attribute. This attribute may appear on any SOAP element and it will apply to that element's contents and all the child elements. The syntax of it is SOAP colon encoding style and it contains a URI. The SOAP body element. The required SOAP body element contains the actual SOAP message, which is intended for the ultimate endpoint of the message. Here is an example of how the SOAP body element is used. The example requests the price of Apple using the get price attribute. A response to the request shown in the previous slide could look something like this, where the price of the apples is returned using the price attribute. Now we come to the SOAP fault element. 
the optional soap fault element is used to indicate error messages and it holds errors and status information for a soap message. If a fault element is present, it must appear as a child element of the body element. The soap fault element has the following sub-elements. The fault code, which is a code for identifying the fault. The fault string, which is a human readable explanation of the fault. The fault actor, which is information about who caused the fault to happen. And details holds the application specific error information related to the body element. SOAP fault codes. The fault code values defined in the table below must be used in the fault code element when describing faults. Error version mismatch is used when found in invalid namespace for the SOAP envelope environment. The must understand error is used with the must understand attribute. The client error is used if the message is incorrectly formed or contains incorrect information. And the server error is used when there is a problem with the server so the message did not proceed. We are now at the end of the lecture and it's time for the test. Please listen to the questions of the test and then you can match your answers later. Question number one. What is SOAP? Explain its purpose. Question number two, give examples where SOAP is used. Question number three, explain the role of XML in SOAP. Question number four, what are the elements that should be contained in a SOAP message? Question number five, what is meant by SOAP encoding? Question number six, what is UDDI and WSDL? Question 7. Define binding in WSDL. And question number 8. How do you define a WSDL document? Let's now have a look at the test answers. What is SOAP explain its purpose? SOAP is the acronym for Simple Object Access Protocol. XML-based messages over a network of computers are exchanged by using SOAP standard using HTTP. A web service needs a combination of XML, HTTP, and a protocol which is application specific. The weather service, talk post service, lookup service, or postal department all are sending XML messages and receiving an XML reply. This is a pattern that dominates the web services. To perform these web services, SOAP is a reliable protocol. Question number two Give examples where SOAP is used. The answer to that is different applications running on different types of operating system and using different technologies. Example, to find company details, a SOAP request get company detail is sent to the server with the company ID as the parameter. In response, details of the company are returned via XML. Industries transport the request for finding best route and best cost price. So the application transfers the request to other similar services which uses SOAP. Question number three, explain the role of XML in SOAP. SOAP is an XML vocabulary. The XML specifications are used to define the language and how to address and send messages. Question number four, what are the elements that should be contained in SOAP message? The mandatory elements are envelope and body. What do you mean by SOAP encoding? A SOAP message has no default encoding, hence in order to define data types using the document encoding style attribute is used. It can appear in any SOAP element. What is WSDL and UDDI? WSDL stands for Web Services Description Language. It is an XML based standard specification for describing web services. UDDI is a Universal Description Discovery and Integration defines a way to publish and discover information about web services. Define binding in WSDL. A binding defines message format and protocol details for operations and messages defined by a particular port type. There may be any number of bindings for a given port type. How do you define a WSDL document? 
the definitions element root or parent element of every WSTL document. It houses all other parts of the service definition. Type, a container for data type definitions using some type system. Message, an abstract type definitions of the data being communicated. Operation, an ab abstract description of an action supported by the service. Or type, an abstract set of ab operations supported by one or more endpoints. Binding a concrete protocol and data format specification for a particular port type. Port, a single endpoint definition as a combination of a binding and a network address. And finally, service, a collection of related endpoints. So this is how a visual document is defined. This is the end of lecture one and it also marks the end of section one. Thank you.